Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this one. This is the third installment of our Sonar for Dummies series. If you haven't seen the first two, I definitely recommend checking those out. I will put the links to those down here in the description. Definitely go watch the first one if you haven't seen that. It'll make this one a whole lot easier to digest. All right, this is a really cool shot. I love this screenshot. You may have seen me use this one before. It tells a fantastic story all in one shot, and it has some information that will really help you out if you're new to sonar. Uh, so let's get started on this one. All right, so you're going to see here all, a whole lot of different sizes and shapes to these returns, okay? These are all the exact same size fish, more or less. We were in a creek channel here, and I was netting shad. They were small in the 3-inch to 5-inch range. We were netting them, so I know the size. And what I did was I ran over them on plane, and then I dropped off a plane just to see how they would look different, okay? So if we talked about a little bit on our first session there about how the ping works, right? Our transducer sends a ping down, and the transducer waits for it to return. When the ping bounces back up, anything that interrupts that ping will show up as a return, right? So the returns on the left here are little tiny dots. The reason they're little tiny dots is we were running 40 miles an hour, okay? So we're on plane, plane speed. Because we're going so fast, our transducer is moving so fast. Each little fish, each little shad, only had a chance to maybe absorb one ping. For argument's sake, let's say they, they absorbed one ping, okay? So we're cruising quick, one ping hits it, and it shows up as one little dot. So they all look like little dots. Simple as, as that, really. If you look towards the bottom here on the left side, you'll see those two little arches down here. Those are probably catfish, lots of catfish here in this lake, probably in the four to five pound range. So you can see how an arch, even a bigger fish, won't really look like an arch at that speed. It still looks more, like, more or less like a dot. I call them light bulbs at that speed. Then in the middle, we're slowing down. We're at about 10 miles an hour, 15, you know, dropping off a plane. And you can see those nice, beautiful arches, the arches that everyone wants to see, right? When your fish finder looks great. And then to the right, we are at a crawl. We're down to eight tenths of a mile an hour. So our returns look nice and long, okay? They look wormy, right? So let's back over here to the left again, to the left dotted line. You're gonna see the transition where we go from those little dots to the little tiny arches, then the medium sized arches moving to the right, and then finally our worms all the way to the right, okay? And that transition where it goes to from dots to arches, we're dropping off a plane, we're going from 40 miles an hour down to 15 to eventually 10. And the arch looks that way in the middle there because we're cruising at about 10 miles an hour. Although the transducer is moving fast, it's not moving lightning fast. So because it's slower, each fish can absorb a little more energy from the transducer. So it's getting hit with more pings. So the pings move up the fish up the air bladder and down the other side of the air bladder as the transducer moves over those shad. So we'll have to picture the shad are standing still. Our transducer is moving over them. The pings are going up and down the air bladder and gives us a nice arch, going about 10 miles an hour. So for argument's sake, if the left returns were absorbing one ping, let's say in the middle there was absorbing maybe 20 pings. Okay, moving to the right. Again, this is all for argument's sake. To the right of the furthest right dotted line, you see how they look like worms now. They're very flattened out. They're flattened out because they're sitting under the transducer longer. So if the returns all the way to the left are absorbing one ping, for argument's sake, the ones on the right may be absorbing 100. So those returns are just sitting under the transducer longer because we're crawling. We're moving our transducer so much slower that we're hitting each fish with more and more pings. So the history as the history scrolls from right to left, it shows every ping, right? So if it was pinged 100 times, it's going to look like a long worm. So that's very important to keep that in mind all the time, really. If you're running on plane, if you're anchored, if you're drifting, if you're on trolling speed, how each return can look different. If you're trolling, the arches you're going to see are going to be more like the arches we're looking at in the middle, okay? Anywhere from that, you know, 5 to 10 miles an hour. If we're just drifting or even anchored, we can have the arches on the right side of the screen where they look long and flat. They can even look perfectly flat and long worm-like. I've had them go all the way across the screen, just one arch, one long worm all the way across the screen. Just because that fish is sitting under the transducer and absorbing ping after ping after ping, so the history makes it look like it's a, it's like a long, long, you know, 
uh, water serpent, right? Like Nessie or something. But it could be a small fish. In this case, it's a three to five inch shad, but it can look enormous if it's just sitting under your transducer. All the way to the left, we're running on plane, so we're looking for dots. So, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, they'll say, you know, I'm running on plane and I just can't see fish when I'm on plane. It's probably because you're looking for arches and you're really not going to see arches at 40 miles an hour. Like I said, even down here where those two catfish are, they're not arches. Even though those are decent sized fish, if you look very close, they resemble, they start to kind of look like an arch, but it's just a dash. So chances are you are marking fish. You're just uh, looking for the arch instead of just a little dot or dash or what I call a light bulb. So this is a great tool to put in your arsenal, understanding your sonar. I hope this one helped you guys out. Please shoot a like on this one and subscribe if you haven't. Putting a like on these videos really does help me out. And I appreciate if you take a second to do that. It lets me know that you guys want more of these. Please stay safe on the water and leave a few for me. Love you. Mean it.